Potential heat pump owners are being asked to pay thousands extra for space hogging buffers or full system repipes, all because of one potentially very outdated rule. So we built an experiment to test that rule and the results might just shock you. For those not in the know, the entire world is about to exchange gas boilers and furnaces to using heat pumps, but they come with two common complaints, cost and space. This is mainly the case where homes have higher heat loss or smaller pipework, where the heat pump struggles to provide enough pumping power to fully circulate the system. And the standard advice here is to repipe the system or install a buffer and secondary pump. But why? What's it all based on? First, let me explain how unchallenged ideas stick with a little story that makes a big point. Little Susie asked if she could cook breakfast with mum one day, and mum said, sure, you can cut the sausages in half, ready to cook, and I'll start the rest. Susie replied, mum, why do we always cut the sausages in half before we cook them? Good question. Why don't you ring grandma and ask her? That's what she always taught me. So Susie called grandma. Grandma, why do we always cut the sausages in half before we cook them? And grandma replied, oh, because the frying pan was too small. And the heating industry is still absolutely full of these rules, which we blindly follow, senselessly cutting up sausages without asking if they still make sense. So what rule are we following that's potentially making us do all this extra expensive work? Well, the keen-eyed among you may have heard me mention my curiosity about pumps in series over the years. Pumps in series is something we need to do an experiment on because I'm not entirely sold, but let's just go through the theoretical correct answers. And that's the rule we're challenging today. You can't put pumps in series. Pumps in series are simply where one pump is placed in front or behind the other in a circuit without being separated by a buffer. This has historically always been taught as a no-no as it could cause air entrainment, cavitation, or cause the pumps to hunt and damage each other. Hunting is where there's a change in the system that causes one of the pumps to change its output, which causes the second pump to change, which feeds back into the inlet of the first pump, causing them to wander around, finding the point at which they should operate, and eventually a fault or break. However, this rule was made decades before PWM pumps became mandatory in 2015, and these pumps intelligently adapt to dynamic and changing system resistances and flow rates. And in fact, I think this rule actually comes from before having pressurized heating systems, as open vent systems have a higher risk of air entrainment, which will damage pumps. In other words, we have a much bigger frying pan, higher pressure, and pumps that can think. So here's the plan. We built a test rig that puts two pumps in series to measure just how much hunting and cavitation happens in a sealed system, work out what the best settings to use are to minimize hunting or pump damage, and leave it on a heavy test here in the office to see how long they'll last until we can break them. And here it is. We're opening and closing this valve to cycle between eight meters head pressure and four meters head, which is a huge swing in duty every 12 minutes, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's a huge swing and stress on the pumps changing 120 times a day. Way more stress than a typical system and nothing like the way a heat geek heat pump system would operate. And so if this old rule is true, these pumps would certainly break. So we had the first pump on and we were so excited to see what would happen next. Second pump was going on in three, two, one. Nothing. Literally absolutely nothing. So we tried to open and close a valve to jump between eight meters head and four meters pressure resistance to shock the pumps into hunting. Still, absolutely nothing. No hunting, no weird pressure loops, just normal operation. Even on constant speed mode, constant pressure, proportional pressure, the pumps constantly act as if they're just alone. Yet, I can't say I'm surprised. All modern pumps are inverter driven and have built-in control algorithms specifically designed to prevent issues like hunting and maintain stable, efficient operation. Now, these are early days, but here's what I've learned so far from this experiment. The old rule of thumb that you can't put pumps in series is absolutely not a panacea. This means if we find a system with high resistance or need higher flow rate, you could possibly just put another pump on the system rather than spending between one and five grand repiping the system or installing a buffer and an extra pump. It's at best no risk at all for steady state heating systems, such as the way you should run your heat pump anyway for maximum efficiency. 
and at worst could perhaps fault in a heavily zoned system with varying duty points. So if you're installing a heat pump in a large property or microball system and want to avoid needlessly cutting up sausages by repiping and adding buffers, which can also lower efficiency by the way, check out our YouTube video on that, here's what to do. Install your second pump after the heating zone valve, powered by the switch live. This will prevent both pumps from running when you likely only need one for the cylinder. If you're having flow rate issues on an existing system, make sure you don't just have dirt in your system or a blockage. You're only gonna make things worse. Use steady state weather compensation control. That's an open loop, non-zoned control strategy. Make sure both pumps are within their duty range. Basically checking that both pumps are individually designed to operate at the required flow rate. And lastly, make sure your system's pipework is within its velocity limits. This solution won't fix the problem of noisy pipework from water rushing around, although I find this very rare and there's lots of leeway here. The rule of thumb for exposed pipework in bedrooms giggity, <laughs> is around about 1.5 meters per second before it becomes a nuisance noise. If the pipework is well boxed in, you may be able to go slightly above this, or if the high velocity pipework is not in a living space, but somewhere like a hallway, you can also exceed this up to a limit of two meters per second. Also bear in mind that these velocity limits should be low risk anyway, as these limits should only be achieved when it's minus two outside, if you have a decent pump control in your heat pump, which you can also couple with the proportional pressure setting on your second pump. Comply with all five of these points and you should be fine to put pumps in series according to our test results so far. This rule of thumb has cost the industry and homeowners hundreds of millions. Is it time to rethink how we install heat pumps? Now, although this test has been in for a few weeks now, it's still incredibly uninteresting and isn't quite conclusive yet. What do you think will happen? How long will these pumps last? Let us know in the comments. What would you have tested differently? And have you ever seen Pumps Hunting series out in the wild? Please comment below to knowledge share. Also check out our video on how buffers and low loss headers lower your system efficiency. Hello and welcome to Heat Geek. I can't do this, it's stupid. And if you're a homeowner, skip the legacy thinking, hire a Heat Geek. Our network is trained to the highest standards in the industry and we all talk with each other every day. When you hire a Heat Geek, you hire the hive mind. If you're an installer, don't just learn new tricks, learn what to ignore. Take our training to get the tools to stop cutting sausages, challenge outdated rules and build better systems. Join the hive mind and maybe even become Heat Geek Verified. That's it for this one. If you enjoyed this, please hit like and I'll see you on the next one.